there we go, recording in progress. So welcome to the Prayer Spaces sessions, getting started. This is the 20th Prayer Spaces session we've done online. Uh, there are others you can see online, uh, and it's great to see you all today. Um, uh, as I said, if you can um, stay muted unless uh, unless you want to ask a question, uh, and you can use the gestures thing, the reactions thing, so raise a hand thing like that if you, if you want to ask a question. Um, uh, I'm going to just pray and um, to get us started, and then we're going to hear a little bit about how Susie got her first prayer space up and running, uh, where she lives, and we'll find out where she lives in a moment. So we've all come from very different days. Um, uh, who's still feeling very hot? Is, is it very hot where you are? It's still quite warm where we are. Yeah, I gather it's been, has it been, who's had rain today so far? Do you have rain? Is that in the north? We've not had rain in the south, we're in the south, we've not had rain here. So we come from very different days. Um, who's been working in the school today? Anybody been in the school today? Um, or, yeah, I've been sitting at the computer all day. So as we come from these different lives and different experiences, let's just pause and be still for a moment. And remember that through today, God has been with us, walking with us, hearing us, speaking to us. And God, we commit this next time, this next hour to you now, as we gather to hear about, to learn about prayer spaces in schools, how we can help children and young people to explore prayer in their school in a way that makes sense to them and that reveals Jesus to them. Help us to, uh, to hear from you, to understand and uh, to be inspired by what you're doing in our schools. Thank you. Amen. So, <clears throat> uh, Susie, you're please uh, welcome to unmute. Hello. Hi. So, Hi. Um, and uh, hang on, I need to do um, this. I need to do this. So, um, so, Susie, whereabouts are you from and what's your background before you run, run prayer spaces in schools? What else do you do? What, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm Susie and um, I live in Clitheroe uh, in Lancashire. So it's about an hour north of Manchester, uh, not far from Blackburn, Burnley, Appleton, that sort of area. Um, uh, I moved to the area about two years ago from York. So over the Pennines and um, we um, moved to help set up a house of prayer, a 24-7 house of prayer in Clitheroe. So that's that's where I am. So you moved to set, so what, tell us about the house of prayer. What's the house of prayer in Clitheroe? Yeah, so it's um, a neutral space that we've got. We've got a, a building um, there's six of us on a, on a team. Um, the uh, voluntary that we uh, run this space for churches to come together um, to pray together. So we have uh, rhythms of prayer during the week um, and monthly worship evening, um, gathering church leaders, that sort of thing. Um, and we have areas within the building really that are set up similarly to prayer spaces in schools but they're they're prayer spaces for people to come um, and use so that's we've been doing that gradually over the last two years wow and how the people are coming like yeah what, who's yeah who comes, who comes to the house of prayer yeah it's a good question so yeah. um yeah local church leaders so we have times of prayer with the local local church leaders uh, we've had youth groups in to use the space um different churches come and maybe use the space for alpha away days um or team meetings we have maybe trustees from the local churches will come and spend some time there to pray for their church or to uh, talk together um uh yeah and so our rhythm of prayer it, it will be people from the local area that come we also have a uh, women's gathering twice a year again women from across lancashire that come um and and pray yeah wow and and, and you moved there to do this so yes, there's something of a call 
on your life i guess to prayer and community and so who else is there there's there's not just you in a building presumably there are other people yes <laughs> yeah so uh, my husband and i um uh, moved to do this my husband uh, works within the building um uh, and is there very regularly uh, there's and then two other couples locally uh, that are doing that together um, and uh, prior to um, to this my background is primary school teaching uh, mm. I've got four children aged between 15 and seven so sort of span the ages currently um, and the other part of what I do is I I'm employed at a local community arts venue uh, where I do creative learning, uh, so run projects in schools, education projects in schools as well. Right, so quite a strong connection to schools and yeah. teacher, uh, primary school teaching, was that your? Primary school is my background, yeah. 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 So which is your favourite key stage? I always ask. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I love them all. Um, probably got more experience in key stage two, but yeah. um, uh, have loved the key stage one the time we've had with in the prayer spaces in key stage one yes yeah, some really good conversations yeah well um I, and i say i come from a i'm a i'm a secondary school person so uh i just don't really quite get but i am in a primary <laughs> prayer space on friday so with my church here so yeah looking forward to uh, learning about key stage one and two in a prayer space so what um so you're in a house of prayer and you're an experienced primary school teacher and you're working in the kind of an education field. I think I can see how the connection might come about that you would think of doing a prayer. But what was the original inspiration? What 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 kind of connected those two things for you personally when you in the uh, uh, yeah, in Clear the Road? Yeah, well, um, yeah, love education, love children, um, <laughs> love prayer. Um, and had been hearing about prayer spaces in schools through 24 seven prayer um, and was just learning a lot more, hearing lots of stories, really inspired by the stories that I was hearing. Um, I'm seeing a real need, particularly post pandemic, um, seeing that need in school for, for spaces for children to, to be still, uh, to experience God and when I was hearing stories I was just thinking this is such a great um, vehicle really for um, God in schools and um, it really fitted with what we were doing in the house of prayer and some of the things that we were trying out there um, we were thinking this would be brilliant if we could use some of this in schools and this seemed a really good um, way to bridge that gap really. So what was your relationship with this first school where you where you ran your first prayer space did did you have any, a relationship with them already doing other things or did you approach yeah. them? what happened um so the the first school that we went into um was actually linked to the church that i go to so there was a link mm. i um knew the, the the children's leader at our church is, is pretty involved in the school um and so i she knows that I like prayer <laughs> and knows her involvement in uh, with the uh, house of prayer and 24 seven prayer. And this school actually spoke to her and said, we, we've got a well-being week coming up. Is there anything that maybe you could do around well-being to just help us think about uh, the spiritual side of well-being? Wow. Um, and she started thinking, oh, well, prayer spaces would be a good vehicle for this. But she was there on her own. Um, so she so, was thinking about how to do that on her own. Um, so had, she, had she heard about prayer space in schools or was that just... She had heard about it oh. and we'd had some conversations yeah. um, and hearing stories. Yeah. Mm. So, um, so, mm. so we sort of started talking um, and really at, at that point it was let's, let's try something together. Um, mm. Pool our resources, our time resources. Um, uh, yeah. And, and talk about that together. So yeah. that's that's how that first one came about, really. Yeah. So that sounds like a fairly easy in, in that you already had a relationship and they were already looking for something that a prayer yeah. space could, could, could meet. And and actually, we often say to people, so we start where it's easiest, start where you've got yeah. the warmest relationship, uh, where people are already looking for the sort of thing that you're doing. And, and we'll get on to what happened 
afterwards. But um, so having having got that sort of that warm introduction, how did you then plan for what you were going to do in terms of space and what you're going to put into it? And was there a theme or you know, you're starting? You've got a big yes, but you've also got a big yeah. bunch of paper to kind of cover. So what did you do? Absolutely. I do, at this point, I just want to say, um, as, as Tim mentioned about all the uh, this being recorded and being online, that's actually where I started um, was I went back through the back catalogue <laughs> of these <laughs> evenings um, and picked the ones that looked useful um, and watched them back over. And I really did. It was so helpful, so helpful hearing other people's experiences, seeing other photographs. Um, that really helped me get some ideas of what it might look like, what it could be like uh, for us. So um, the website has just got so many brilliant resources. So I did start literally, uh, I went to the how do you start <laughs> and I went yeah. through the pages yeah. um, and I made some notes of the things that we needed to think about. Um, and then I went back uh, to, to the lady that had the relationship with the school. Mm. And we talked together about what it was they were looking for and what we could realistically do. Mm. Um, so, yeah, they they wanted something that linked to well-being. So um, that was fairly broad. So we had a chat together, this lady and I, um, to just think through the different areas uh, outlined on the website of, of all the different resources of how we could sort of go through the different streams of, of what was there and how that would link to well-being. So we thought about gratitude and we looked at all the, the thankful activities and we chose two of them. And so it was it was really as simple as that. We asked the school, what is it that you would like? Mm -hmm. They told us the theme of their week, what they would be looking at. And then we typed in the website, <laughs> had a look, yeah. looked at the keywords, see what uh, activities were suggested. We looked sort of at the broad spectrum and then chose the ones that we thought would fit um, that theme. Right. Um, I <clears throat> Just to let everybody know that uh, Susie's got some pictures coming up, which mm -hmm. will show you what she then did. Um, but um, just before we get to that, so you've got some ideas. You need obviously more than one person to look after a prayer space in a school how did you where did you find your team and how did you train them given that none of them I'm guessing none of them had done a prayer space before so you were starting from scratch in many ways didn't you? how yeah. did you manage that recruiting and training people yeah so with our first one so I, um we, d we have gone on to run a few since but with that first one we, d we did really start, like Tim said, started um, as easy as we could. Yeah. <laughs> so we handpicked people from, um, from the church team that we knew already had DBS in place. Uh, we knew they had a level of experience of working with children. So we, we had the basics covered in, in, in the safeguarding, um, knowing how to be around children, um, and then we spent some time with them before the prayer space, uh, talking them through what was different about running a prayer space to mm. doing children's work. So mm. very much outlining um, how we were there to be a praying presence, how we were there to, yes, answer questions and support the children, but not necessarily to teach or to, you know, to really allow them to experience the, the space which is probably quite different from what our team were used to in yeah. the church setting where it would be very much led activities and um, yeah, teaching. So, yeah. so, but we started with a level of, uh, so we weren't starting from scratch if that makes yeah. it. Yeah. Makes sense. That's really helpful. That's really helpful kind of overview of, of all of that. Um, so do you, want to, do you want to show us a little bit about what um, mm. we've, we've got screen sharing set up. So um this will be a few uh, photos of what uh, what it looked like, and we might ask some questions about these as we go along. That's a, not no, that window. Uh, that's <laughs> the other window. Not the right window. <laughs> <laughs> Helpfully, it's disappeared. Can you see that, everybody? There we go. Yep. Fantastic. So this would be the yeah. hall um, that we had. So this is like the overview of the whole space, um, and that was 
quite um I, I would say this is the biggest sort of part of in the preparation the thinking through in advance that was tricky actually mm. it's finding a space um that uh works mm. there were definitely things that didn't work about this space that we would have in hindsight done differently um but so thinking that through with school staff as well working out who would be where um yeah so that's that we they lent us the small hall so the school did have a small hall that for the the, the four days that we were in mm. um because it was their well-being week and they were off timetable in that sense they'd made sure there was no PE lessons and things like that so we could set up in the morning and um, we had it all through the day we had it set up over lunchtime as well um and uh, but the the difficulty with this particular prayer space is that it was the same space that after school club used which um did mean we needed some extra volunteers to help us pack it down uh, and set it up the next morning so that was one um, thing we learned that was uh that is on all of the training says don't do that so uh, <laughs> we we did it and then went yeah i can see why that's no. not a good idea <laughs> so you were having to pack this up and then set yeah. it up again each morning. Yeah, that is yeah. a lot of work for, for you. And yeah. your um, yeah. Folks, if you want to ask questions as we go along, do put them in the chat, and we'll um, we can uh, we can address those. Um, I just flicked it through some more of the photos. Yeah. So, um, what have we got going on here? Uh, so we've got uh, the pom pom prayers. Uh, was thinking about this one on on the website. Thinking about. Um, how special they are, something that's special. They they had something to do while they were thinking about that and could write on it uh, about that. The thankful ribbons, uh, you can see there, they had some hearts to write on it, something that they were grateful for and then peg that on. Again, something um, that we thought about in advance, but again, you know, on the day, working with what we got. So we had the, the wall bars, so we made use of those. So anything that was there that we could do quickly uh so with the packing down we could leave those things and just shut the wall bars and then that was you know made it oh yeah that's good, good idea mm. things yeah. like that that we did so we've got a few more here mm. um we had the calm jars which were a, a huge uh hit everybody loved those um so that's a, another activity that's on the website um where we made the jars uh, for them to watch and talked about uh, stillness and uh, worries and uh, spending time being still to help us thought through those. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, just also to mention this particular PowerPoint, mm -hmm. um, I know we're sort of coming on to talking about this later, but um, mm -hmm. uh, oh, are we... You've stopped sharing. Are you going? Great, that's back. fine. Yes, You're I'll. Uh, yeah. Are we back? Yeah. yeah. Um, I I put that together after that initial prayer space. Mm. Um, I took lots of photos in that initial prayer space, um, because I knew I wanted to speak to other schools. Mm -hmm. So I then put together a short presentation, short PowerPoint, uh, with some examples, uh, because that was a school that we had quite an easy access, easy entry point. There were other schools that we knew um, that, that might be interested, but might need a little bit more information, a little bit more. Um, so I put that together so that we, when I went in to speak to a head teacher, I had some photos to show them and could talk them through. Um, Did, what and was that, was that helpful? Did that turn out to be a helpful thing to have done? To really able... helpful, really helpful. Uh, so the head teachers could see what it looked like. Mm. Um, there was a starting point for a conversation mm, um, mm. And, and that helped sort of springboard into what we could then offer other schools. So um, it, it was helpful. So in that first prayer space, we were sort of already thinking we'd like to do more of this. Mm, so mm. let's get lots of photos um, so that we can share that with other schools. OK, uh, there's a couple of questions already. One is, will slides be available anywhere? Is that I mean, the, you can you'll be able to watch this back on the video because the slides will appear on the on the video that we save. Um, but are you happy to share that? Yeah, PowerPoint with yeah we've got permission from all those children in that. Yes, yeah, so I'm happy to to pass that. that. 
that would be wonderful. So we can um, uh, email it to people that have subscribed to this evening's um, session. Uh, somebody said, "What is the faith mix in the school?" Yeah, is it was it a was it a Church of England school? Yeah, uh, this was a Church of England school. Yeah. yeah. So and, in, and what's the faith of... mix of the of the pupils in the school? Yeah, really mixed. So in terms of the leadership of the school, the head teacher was very open and keen uh, for prayer to be part of their wellbeing week. Um, mixed response from staff, but that was actually really positive by the end of the week. You could see um, that staff bringing their children in at the start of the session, you could tell they were a bit unsure how it was going to work. And um, a lot of them sort of started by thinking, oh, they're just going to mess around. They're not going to um, cope with this. But actually yeah. seeing the children settle into the session and mm. every single staff member by the end just saying, I can't believe it. I can't believe how quiet or still or engaged they've been. Um, so in terms of the faith mix the children there is a real mix within the school although the leadership were very supportive yeah and and that mix does that include children of other faiths as well as no faith um, yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, somebody asked how did it work in terms of funding yeah that's a great question like all that stuff in the room how was it did it cost a lot of money or like where did you get stuff from was did you were you able to do it cheaply how did that yeah. work um, that is a really good question. In, t in terms of like manpower, um, that is woman power, people power. Um, that was between the church um, and the house of prayer. So we, um, uh, we sort of volunteered our time from those two organizations. Um, we borrowed as much as we could. Um, so the church had a certain amount of things around um, at the House of Prayer, we are actually, because we, we're wanting to expand what we're doing, each time we do a prayer spice, we're sort of buying one thing. Mm. Um, so we're trying to build up our uh, resources so that we can loan them out to people yeah. who are doing prayer spaces locally. Mm. Um, uh, and the, I'm just trying to think, the church itself um, really kindly they uh, brought in any of the actual usable resources so the pom-poms and the pieces of paper um so the consumables as it were so the, the, the stationary yeah. stuff yeah, yeah. prayer space yeah. is that is just the most perfect opportunity to go and buy some stationery isn't it yeah it's just, <laughs> yeah. It's just if you love buying post-it notes this is the perfect excuse ever yeah um uh so, so it sounds like there are some things you did have to pay for, but other stuff you could borrow from people. I noticed yeah. like there's a big square gazebo in there. Was that a borrowed from? That something? was borrowed. Yeah, yeah, that was borrowed from um, a local organisation that had one. Yeah. Um, we just put out on the church, um, you know, WhatsApp groups and things. Does anybody have any spare cushions? Does anybody have any spare fairy lights? The church actually had quite a lot of fairy lights and things yeah. like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. But actually asking to borrow things was was really good. And we did actually have, you know, a member of the congregation to say that we love this. We would love to buy something to, to help it. Sort wow. of thing. So yeah. um, actually asking was yeah. really useful. And uh, another brilliant question. How many people did you need to run it? How many people did you need in the space to to run it because obviously the principle of a prayer space is, is this is a gift to the school so the yeah. the teacher can just kind of take a pace back really and yeah you know, they're there yeah. for the sort of the, the the responsibility for the class but you're responsible for running the, the prayer space how many people did you have yeah mm -hmm. that's a really good question and we um we actually learned quite a lot from those first few days um i would uh, we had a minimum of three people um in the room that we found we needed that to keep um the sort of atmosphere and level of so that they, there was enough support for the children mm. um and and like you say say so that the staff a lot of the comments from the staff that was really encouraging is that they felt able to engage with the children so they weren't having to sort of um do everything for them but they were able to have conversations and they were able to slow down with their children 
and mm. um, and find out a lot more what was going on for their children and that was comments from the staff that they found really helpful the thing that we learned that um we've used for subsequent ones um is actually thinking about your volunteer base and actually you might have people that are not necessarily going to be wanting to do the actual prayer space but actually building a team of volunteers that are happy to do setup was really good so we had some extra people in who could help for you know the 40 minutes in the morning and the 40 minutes that were a bit less at the end of the day who could help set up and pack away and that was like a different different skill set different people yeah. yeah oh yeah that's perfect those those people are gold dust yeah uh, but sometimes you have to actually ask them um, exactly yeah, yeah. yeah um uh somebody just asked a question that's similar to one that i was going to ask which was um i was going to ask what one thing do you wish you'd known before you ran it that you kind of learned after somebody said what barriers did you face in the setup so uh what, what have been the the big learning points that um yeah, yeah I, as i said i think the 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 biggest challenge um was not having sole use of the space yeah. for the whole time um yeah. So the fact that we had to set up each morning and set down um, mm. and that that was with an um, after school club and a breakfast club. So it's liaising with them as well. So that, that you know, the first morning they were there, they didn't really know about it. Um, so it's then trying to make sure that your relationship with them is is good and OK and that you're leaving the space as they need it later. So that I would say is the most difficult thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that has in subsequent prayer spaces that we've run since has been definitely one of the questions that we've started with is, you know, what space is going to work yeah. uh, and how can we use that? And, and you know, in the, this particular school, that is the only space we can use. It's the only space they're able to give us. So it's then thinking through, um, can we manage that have we got enough of a team to do the setup and set down to make it possible without it being too um too hard work or not being ready in time yeah. that sort of thing yeah so yeah so sometimes that will affect what you put in the space and how you plan yes. for it to be able to be yeah. yeah to make it quick to be able to put up and take absolutely yeah. if something takes yeah. an hour to set up so in my secondary school prayer spaces we had a fabulous identity activity which involved a whole load of scaffolding and black drapes and eight mirrors and fairy lights and everything but it did take an hour to set up and so uh yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Like i that. mean yeah. that's a really good point so we did things like we used um you know like shopping bags the reusable mm. shoppers and that we labeled them with an activity and we put everything in the shopper for yeah. that activity so that mm. at the end of the day whoever was packing down they had a bag and they filled it with all the things uh, uh, and then yeah. the next morning they just got that bag out and it was sort of ready that's, to go that's just so perfect yeah that just makes so much sense and it's one of those things you have to once you hear it you go yes of course we'll do that yeah. Yeah, that's right. um we, what i want to keep going were there any more uh, any more slides you wanted to show was that was that it was uh that... that's all from that that's one it? okay yeah. yeah um and uh somebody's asked uh, are there any specific considerations for running a prayer space in a secondary context well that's that's the context that i've worked in here in colchester where i live for many many years um and we only ever worked in state secondary schools. We didn't work in any church schools, just in state secondary schools. Press spaces work absolutely in state secondary schools. So secondary schools are looking for spiritual development resources as well. Um, RE teachers are really grateful for an opportunity to uh, for their, their students to have, have access to something that helps them to explore prayer in a way that is not overly religious, uh, yes, it has a Christian foundation, but it has that agency that allows students to explore for themselves. So um, as Susie hinted earlier, this is about when she was talking about who you recruit and, and reminding them that this isn't a teaching thing like we might do in church. It's more of a learning experience. So um, but secondary schools really appreciate that way of working as well. Um, and you'll find generally you'll find that RE departments on the whole we've got one or two around here that wouldn't have it but on the whole re departments are very glad of it uh, and schools are required to show spiritual development as part of what they're offering their pupils and uh, a press space can really really work like that 
obviously work where start where it's easier start where you have a warm relationship where the school trust already has some level of trust and they're prepared to 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 give it a go but they absolutely work in secondary schools um uh just finally susie because this has been brilliant and uh I, there's a bit i want to add on in a moment and then i want people to have a chance to chat about it in breakout rooms um my favorite story just it's from from your week in that school what's been a favorite story um, I, th I think one of the things that we we loved was actually seeing the journey of each individual class. I saw some people had asked um, mm. sort of how long. Um, we really did play it by ear. It was around about 45 minutes for each class, but you could see them as they came in. There was that excitement and then you saw them settle into the space um, and you could you just feel that atmosphere of engagement and prayer um uh in terms of a a favorite is is just we had this uh we did a heavens above one uh activity which again is another one that's on the on the website and um, we had a, a blackout tent um uh, and uh we had uh, one uh chap with additional needs and he just absolutely loved it and just kept coming back uh, for more and then at, at the end of each session we would gather everybody back around I don't know if you uh, on the picture we had a cross in the center so we had sort of a centerpiece of the cross and we all sat around and had that moment at the end to just reflect what you know how how has this space made you feel um what have you experienced what are you taking away um and just hearing uh this lad talk about that the peace and feeling peaceful in that space uh, and we, we did hear that time and again from children and and that was in the busyness of a school life that was really good to hear yeah fabulous Susie thank you for now that has been just a brilliant uh, overview of getting that first prayer space going and, and what happened um uh, Karen's asked the question do there have to be multiple activities or could you start off with just one prayer activity uh, Karen, that's what we would might call um, a pop-up prayer space on our website, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. We've got um, different ways of thinking about how we make space for prayer in school. And the prayer room style that Susie's described. Um, oh, sorry, I need to let's let's do let's go back to uh, back like this. So the prayer room style that uh, Susie has described is one way of doing that with lessons coming in. But a pop-up space might be around a particular theme, a particular moment in the calendar year or the school year or the church year so uh, one of the ones that we've done here in Coventry a lot is around remembrance and we might do just a single activity about remembrance for just one two or three days in a school and it just provides a focal point for anybody in the school to remember people they've loved who've died um, as part of our shared remembrance that we do around the 11th of November um, <clears throat> so that's a single activity and it tends to be in a space that anybody can access so it's not in a classroom it might be in the hall or the atrium or the foyer or the somewhere where people anybody can come and, and access it and uh, you only need one or two people to look after that ideally a couple of people to look after that and just to possibly break in lunchtime uh, or break lunchtime in the end of the day or something so um, it can be a very simple activity <laughs> And uh, obviously it feeds into the life of the school. You could do something around Advent. You could do something for year sixes at the end of the summer term as they're about to leave that gives them a space to reflect on what they've, what they've, what's been most special about being in school and what are their hopes and prayers for the, for the year ahead in year seven. Stuff like that. So choose a moment, choose a theme. And um, there might be something that you could do just for a few days that help to capture people's attention and give them a way of responding spiritually or prayerfully um we uh we produced um some resources around the death of the queen which was a year ago uh we produced some resources around the coronation last may and um and uh we're now um uh in the process we'll be do producing some new material um around um the weekend of prayer for global hunger in october which some of you might be aware of so there's um that's a particular kind of world event of praying about the situation of global hunger in the world how can we respond to that and we've, we've got some resources that we'll be working on with world vision that will create creative moments for people just to pause to consider 
and then to reflect or pray. So um, yes, absolutely. You don't have to have multiple things. You can do just one thing. Um, uh, I want to, uh, uh, we'll um, hold some of the questions for now. I want to um, just talk a little bit about how press facing schools can help you. And I'm going to, I'm going to go to here. So uh, this is, um, this is our website. So um, uh, prayerspacesinschools.com and uh, there's a whole load of resources on there. Um, <clears throat> uh, and let me go back to the beginning here. So this is how Press Basic Schools can help you. Um, if you go to uh, here, so home, about, and then prayer spaces, there's a drop down list. And you've got what are prayer spaces, a simple description, uh, instruction planning your prayer space, which has got like kind of a nine step guide to how you could run a prayer space. Uh, and over here on the right, you've got um, the different types of prayer space. So that might be a classroom space like Susie's described, or it might be a permanent space uh, or an outdoor space or a pop-up space like I've just described. So the simple description of those, and then there are examples there as well of um, how they work. The nine step guide just takes you through a sort of process of what might I need to think about in running my first prayer space. Uh, and so that does exactly what it says. There are nine steps and each one helps you to think about a different aspect of planning your prayer space. Uh, the big kind of offer is the resources, which are all free to download and use. So under the resources tab, uh, prayer activities, and there are over 200 prayer activities there, but you can sort them. There's a way of filtering them or uh, selecting particular themes and sorting on them, and then you can download those. Um, to do that, you do need to sign up. That's um, it's a couple of reasons for that. One is we like to know who's who's downloading our resources um, because we're offering them for free. Um, also, it it uh, makes it less it makes it more difficult for people who might want to try and just download all the resources and sell them. So we offer everything for free. People contribute for free. We want this to be a a, a way of sharing best practice and and creative ideas with one another. Uh, but we don't want people to rip us off. So uh, help, having people sign up helps with that. So we just need a few details from you and then you can uh, log in each time to download the resources that you want. Um, I would point people to the stories. So uh, we've heard Susie's story brilliantly told today, um, but there are lots of other stories and we do a story every week, which comes out on Saturdays, Saturday stories. Um, and again, you can see uh, on the stories tab, uh, you can read all of the stories. And if you click on all, they just come up in chronological order. So the newest one is at the top. But you can also select for the different types of prayer spaces you want you to run. So if you're thinking perhaps of running an outdoor prayer space, you click on the outdoor tab and that will just pull up stories from people who have run an outdoor prayer space. So it just makes it a bit easier to manage the large number of stories that there are there. Um, and then we also have videos. So as Susie said, there are the prayer space sessions which are recorded and hosted on our YouTube channel. And if you go to the videos tab under resources, that will take you to a page which uh, has all of these and it has other other videos as well it's got some from conferences that we've done and uh, every now and then i get out and about and i get to do a short video about a school that i might have visited or somebody that's doing something amazing so there's uh, a great one about um, an outdoor space in a primary school in warsaw and uh, it's open every lunchtime uh, at this outdoor space brilliant uh, we've got people around the country who can help you um uh, so if you wanted to go and visit a prayer space or ask questions of somebody, uh, somebody else who's been running them, uh, we can often find somebody who's close to you. And uh, finally, we would love it if you could register your prayer spaces. So if you do run a prayer space, please let us know about it. Uh, once you're signed in, you can, you, there's this button at the end comes up called Register Prayer Space. And uh, that's just your opportunity to let us know that you're running a prayer space. If we know in advance, we'll feature that in our social media on a Monday when we post about prayer spaces that are happening across the country and encourage people to pray for the space that you're running. We just pray by the name of the town, not by the name of the school, just the town. So uh, so we'd love you to do that. Uh, I think that's about it from there. There we go. So um, uh, let's uh, dive into breakout rooms just for uh, 10 minutes or so. Um, just an opportunity to uh, chat to those around you, hear about their experience, see if there are more questions that you have, because if there are, we'd love to... Uh, see if we can answer some of those just in the hour that we have here. Uh, we're going to breakout rooms and um, and we'll come back for some a little bit of Q&A just before we finish uh, before uh, half past. So if you're ready for this, here we go. And uh, we're recording again. So welcome back, everybody. Um,
I hope that was helpful. Um, does anybody have a question uh, for myself or for Susie or uh, or uh, anything that you want to add from your experience that would help others? Uh, now's your moment. So um, dive in and yeah. who's... Um... Can I have the... <laughs> Yes, Carol. Is that Carol? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hiya. go for it. Uh, are there any pictures or anything? I'm starting, for, I'm doing everything myself at the moment. So I'm setting up a prayer space in the corner of our uh, assembly hall. It's a multi-purpose space. It's the PA hall. I've got a corner. So I just want, I need, I need some imagery. So I need some examples of imagery mm. I could put in a prayer space. I've got a group of children to be the prayer group mm. to then filter through into their classroom. But I just I just need some inspiration for that. Are there any um any yeah. resources for that? Do, do go and have a look on, on our website around permanent prayer spaces, because that sounds like oh. what so okay. what we mean by permanent prayer space is a space that is always available for people to come to yeah. to think about prayer and reflection. Um if, the best thing about these spaces, though, is that the, the content of them is refreshed fairly regularly. So they've got some life in them. Yeah. Uh, and that, that ideally that, that content is refreshed by a person that is known to the school and the pupils and they get yeah. to know and, and that. But there's we've got some material on the website around permanent prayer spaces so, and some stories that will link to that as well. So hopefully that will be uh, an inspiration to you. Yeah. Great. Great, great question. Yeah. Thanks, Carol. Any any others? You can put them in the chat or um, or just speak up. And uh, if there's uh, any questions that you've got, yeah, Caroline. Hi. Yes, I was just wondering about numbers. Um, say you've got a hall or you're given um a classroom. Does it work with having the whole? I mean, I was interesting. Um, you know, uh, Susie earlier, uh, she said about the whole class coming into the hall. Would you normally recommend that, or would you sort of perhaps suggest half a class comes in? Yeah, Susie, what do you reckon? Um, that is a really a really good question because uh, one of the other things I would say is we learnt quite a lot from that pr first prayer space, and then going into speaking with teachers and heads about planning subsequent ones um, we went with recommendations um, and I would just stick with them uh, so so some sometimes you can't do anything about it so we needed to have the whole class um, mm -hmm. and we made it work and um, when we did a year six we did uh, four year six different schools with year six pupils um, and we said it will work better with smaller groups they will have a better experience. Um, some schools said, we can't make that happen. Um, and it was okay. And they, they had an okay time. Other schools, uh, you know, listened. And we had a smaller group um, of about 10 to 15. Um, and they got, I would say, loads more out of it. So I, 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 as I say, my experience is limited on that. Um, but what we have learned is when you've learned what works, it's helpful to be able to say to a school, we have found that this is the best way of doing it. If we can mm. have that, that would be good. And um, so smaller groups we did find were brilliant. It has worked absolutely fine with a class though. If you've got enough activities, I think I would say with that one, so that we we tried to make it that there weren't more than about four children at any of the individual activities and and we said that to them as they were going around thank you that's really helpful thank yeah you. that's really wise um uh yeah um somebody's asked the question what there was mention of training when and where is this available please well uh this is part of what we do um we also do in-person training. So I'm uh, and my colleague Naomi are, are buzzing around the country doing in-person training. If you go to the events section on the website, so uh, get further help, um, there's an events page, which is all training events. You can see where we're going to be and when, and there's a booking link usually there, so you can just book in. If if you if you'd like to host some training where you are and you think you could get a reason, you know, a few people together, 
get in touch with us and uh, we'll see because it especially if there's a big if it looks like we're not going anywhere near you it might be because we need somebody near where you are to say yeah we could host a training day we could offer you a, a church for a day come and do a training day here so please do get in touch with us we could come and do a training day for you and what we would do is we'd bring some prayer space activities along as well for you to try out and to see and to be hands-on and we try and make it fairly dynamic and interactive so uh we'd love to do that um uh, someone said how would you manage opposition to prayer spaces from staff parents or students um we're overrunning very slightly susie uh briefly have you had any what have you had any opposition that you're aware of from staff students or... no i actually the overwhelming response has been um, really positive. Schools are really eager to, to address this area of well-being and space for our young people. Um, what we have experienced is sort of caution and um, maybe people coming in and you can tell by their body language that they're not quite um, on board. Um, and the best way uh, is warmth. And um, I think Tim, I remember getting some really good advice from Tim on one of these sessions was just being very open handed and um, non threatening in the language that's used about uh, you can come and experience if you're not, you know, of faith, just come and experience what those of faith. Uh, I think that's what you said, wasn't it, Tim, about, you know, and that that was really helpful to have that language that was non-threatening and enabled them to experience the space without feeling they had to be a Christian or, yeah, so having that non-threatening language was really important. And by the end, they were really positive. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Just the whole language around uh, it's a place to explore, to discover, yeah. to encounter that's that's the kind of space it is it's not somewhere where you're going to be indoctrinated or preached at or taught that this is the right way it's a space for you but what's fabulous is that you give children and young people the agency to explore in their own way and they make the god discovery in that space in in surprising ways it, it's it still surprises me 15 years after the first one we ever ran so yeah we probably ought to wrap it up there because we did say we would only stick to an hour and we're now three minutes over. Um, I hope that's been helpful and inspiring. We'd love to keep in touch with you. Please send us an email, info at prayerspacesinschools.com. If you want to get in touch with us about anything, do go and have a quick look at the website. Um, and um, I'm just going to pause just to pray and to send us out. Uh, and after that, you're welcome to uh, to sign off if you want to, uh, if you want to stick around and ask uh uh, Susie or myself any more questions you will hang on for a little bit longer but for now let's just pause for a moment um, and as I often ask people to think about uh, three things uh, head heart and hands head what's uh, what good idea has uh, kind of grabbed your attention and then heart what's what's moved you what's um What's inspired you? What's uh, not so much the intellectual, but the the spiritual, the psychological, the emotional? What's moved you? And then hands. What do you want to do? Is there something that you're going right? Well, let's. What is it that uh, that you'd like to do? And so we pray. God, thank you for the opening that we have in so many schools. Thank you for the people of goodwill who are the teachers and head teachers and staff in our schools. Thank you for the relationships that we have. We pray that you would open wide the gates of our schools, that the King of glory may come in, that children and young people will be able to explore and discover your presence, even in the midst of their schools. And so be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for hanging on um, and uh, we'll see you all again sometime, I hope, and uh, maybe out and about. So if you need to go, thank you and goodbye and bless you. And we'll see you again soon.